Hey everybody, it is Megan Ritz with Plastic Cakes here for another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we are celebrating local author Annie Sullivan with her second book in this series, A Curse of Gold. Um, this is her third book in just over two years, so very exciting from this author. And um, she normally celebrates her book launches with a cake from Plastic Cakes. And so we have an awesome relationship with her and um, she did have her book launch party today so you can jump over onto her page to check that out. And um, we are going to be giving away a signed copy of her newest book. So every comment that you leave enters you into the drawing. So be sure to leave a comment, leave lots of comments, and then um, we will do a drawing at the end of the week to see who wins the signed copy of this new book. So today, in honor of Annie Sullivan, we are going to do a 3D sculpted cake in the shape of a book. Um, this is a really fun sculpted cake. It's something that should not be intimidating if you want to try it at home. It gets you really um, playing with sculpting, um, freeform sculpting, um, and it's just a very fun, rewarding cake to do. So I want to share that with you guys, share with you my tips and tricks and little things that you can do to make it look a little bit even cooler. Um, so throw your comments at me. I'm going to jump on the live here on my laptop so that I can see your comments. And then we will get started. I hope everyone is excited for today. Let's see, let me refresh my page here. I love getting to do these lives with you guys and connecting. And um, I'm so excited to be able to see your comments today. Let me make sure my volume is down. All right, comments, I love it. Hey ladies, hey Terry, hey Janine, hey Donna. I'm going to stick this right in front of me so I can hopefully see those comments popping up and answer questions as we go. All right, guys, I'm super excited for this. Um, just a couple quick announcements before we get started. Next week for our Tutorial Tuesday, we're going to be doing fall flowers. Um, and I love getting to do flowers with you guys. Um, I think it's so fun to be able to do like the freeform buttercream piped flowers. We're gonna dig into some fall flowers, play with fall colors, um, and just do something a little bit different next week. So I'm super excited about that. I hope you are too. And then um, I'm very excited for the very anticipated announcement of the Indie Cake Off. If you don't know what this is, this is our own local cake decorating contest. Um, we were supposed to have this the first week of April to celebrate our 25th anniversary at Classic Cakes and um, COVID shut down, everything had to stop. So we've struggled with how we were going to um, relaunch this cake decorating competition. And we have finally figured that out. So we are going to be doing a virtual party um, and judging. And um, the deadline is Sunday, November 8th. So you guys have plenty of time to join in. You can go to IndieCakeOff.com and join the party for that. There are different categories for amateurs, professionals, master level, um, decorators. All the information is on IndieCakeOff.com. If you have any cake decorating friends, if you are anywhere in the world, you get to join this competition. Um, so again, IndieCakeOff.com, and I hope you guys are excited. I am excited today for this one as well. Let's get started. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Donna. All right, so when I... Um, Whenever you're touching cake um, or food, you should wear gloves. So if you're baking cake at home, you don't necessarily have to. Um, there's no police for that. But I definitely recommend it for sculpted cakes because you do have to kind of get in there a little bit more. Um, we are gonna start with a quarter sheet cake, 13 by nine. And we are going to just add a tiny bit of buttercream onto the board just to act like glue. And I'm just going to turn this guy out. We just have a delicious white cake here today. Um, when I go to get cakes out of the pan, I always shake them a little bit to make sure they're loose. Make sure I know what's coming out. And then I have a beautiful cake. I'm going to use that pan for my scraps that I'm going to cut away. I have my delicious beverage here. So, reminder. Throw me your comments. Each comment is an entry for a chance to win this new book. Um, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim the edges off my cake. 
very little, but I want to get this brown off of the cake um, just because the edge is going to be just a little bit less tender than the inside of the cake. So when I'm sculpting, or actually if I was just icing this as a rectangle, I would cut just this tiny little edge off here. So I have this nice, fresh, tender, delicate cake. Um, and the easiest way I find to do this is just to very gently go down the line with a nice long serrated knife. It doesn't have to be a sharp knife. I'm taking very little off this cake. Um, so you can get these Costco knives or whatever. Um, like I said, we're just shaving just a tiny bit off the edge here. You do want to make sure that you go straight down so you don't have a bevel in any direction. Samantha says, your videos are my fave each week. Thank you, Samantha. That's so cool to hear. I love it. I love that I get to connect with you guys. We get to play. All right. So I'm just going to use my knife to pull these crumbs off. I don't like mess. So I'm always cleaning out my crumbs. So here's what I'm envisioning. I don't want to touch this book. Let me wipe my hands off. Here's what I'm envisioning. The open book is going to be the cake. It's going to look like an open book. That is my goal here. So I want to have that little like pages open curved part. And I want to have the little indent in the middle. So I'm going to start with that indent and I'm going to use my knife just to kind of mark a few spots. So I'm going to guess at the middle. You can totally use, and I'm just going to make a little cut so I can kind of see the line. I'm not worried about each side being identical because if a book is open, unless it's perfectly centered in the middle of the book, it doesn't really matter, right? You can have the book open at any amount of pages. Um, I do want my center to be pretty darn centered. You can measure it if you feel like you need to. Um, and let me wipe off my hands here. So we use this beautiful book here. So if I have this opened, I'm gonna have this bevel on the edge here with the pages, right? It's not straight, it's gonna be angled. I'm gonna have this little curve up here. I'm gonna have this indent. So those are the things I wanna focus on so that it looks as real as possible. So, first thing I'm going to do is I have my end here. I'm going to cut a very um, shallow corner off. So I just have my little corner cut off. Let's see, this guy here. And we're just kind of going to fiddle until I feel like it looks the way I want. So, when you're doing sculpted stuff, take a little bit off at a time, like shaving, and a little bit more until it's where you want it. You don't have to take off a ton at a time because it's really hard to put cake back on. All right, so I got that side done. Let's do this side. Any sheet cake, um, and if you have a round cake, you can cut it into a rectangle. If you have a square, you can make a square book. Or cut it into a rectangle loving this. I love cutting cake. There's something very rewarding about chopping a cake up. Whether it's to eat or to sculpt. Alright, so I am just shaving the little crummies off here. And I have my cake pan right underneath my board so I can just drop my mess into it. Alright, so I'm going to make this one a little bit more steep. That looks better. So. Alright, and I have my mark in the middle, so I am going to make a little wedge. And I'm just trying to make it the same. But again, I'm not worried about it being like identical because a book isn't gonna naturally be perfectly symmetrical. And I feel like if you try to make it too perfect, then it doesn't look real anymore but I do want that indent to be pretty deep. So I have a kind of an angle. 
I'm not worried. We'll see how it turns out. I can always correct it by doing a little bit more on that end. Just trim a little bit off, a little bit off. Again, we'll sculpt the cakes just a little bit at a time until you get it where you want it. All right, so now I want to think about, I have my main pieces, now I want to think about the general like flow. So I want to make sure that I like my shape. And I think I want my pages to angle back down again. So I have this nice rounded shape. Like I said, guys, leave comments. Every comment. <laughs> Terry says that's a big knife and it's kind of scary. It's really, um, it's a long knife, which I actually prefer for sculpted cakes. I also have just a little paring knife that I use for like fine details. Um, but I find it very relaxing to use a long knife. It is definitely not scary sharp. Um, if I was cutting something other than cake, I would want it to be. But for cake, I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, but I find when the knife covers the entire length and I don't have to cut in sections, it's much easier. So I definitely recommend a longer knife for this. All right, so let's cut our little bevel at the end again because I kind of messed that up. I'm gonna cut our little bevel. I'm so excited to show you guys this this cake. Okay, so I have the general shape. Feels kind of like a book, right? I got my pages, I got my bevel. We got to get rid of some of these crumbs. So I love using just a credit card, a gift card. Throw it in your, um, what's it called, dishwasher so that it's sanitary and then you can use this for all kinds of wonderful little things. Gonna pull all these crumbs off. So when you go to ice a cake, which we're gonna ice this guy next, you want to make sure you don't have any crumbs anywhere because they will end up all over your cake. So you really want to clean up this part. Right. Knife, we're pretty much done with. Move this delicious cake snack to the side. Hey Tori. Hey Mary. Hey Betty. Janine says, Kating, cutting the cake makes me nervous. It is probably still scary for me when I make my first cut. Um, this one, not as much, because I feel like it just, it's very forgiving sculpting this cake. All right, so we just have some white buttercream. Terry Tanner's favorite thing. Beautiful big bowl of buttercream. And we're gonna start slapping it on. So I'm gonna start with just white, since our pages are gonna be white, whatever color you wanna make your pages. And we're just gonna slide that buttercream all over. Um, so, when you sculpt things, you do wanna think about the fact that you're adding a layer of buttercream or fondant or whatever you're putting on there. And so, the proportions of your cuts may not end up the same. And sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that makes it difficult. So we are just gonna smear this buttercream on these pages. It's a very moist cake, it does not wanna stick. I love that when you have buttercream that doesn't quite wanna stick to your cake, you know that that cake is delicious. And working our way down these pages, beautiful. So I'd love to know what kind of sculpted things you guys want to see. Um, I'm working on our October schedule for our classes and I have a really fun Halloween one planned. Um, so that Halloween week we're going to have an epic, absolutely epic 
um, tutorial for you guys, which I'm so excited about. We're going to play with some real lights and how to put those in cake. Um, and it's going to be a sculpted cake and Halloween cake. So, but I am planning the rest of October. So if you guys have any suggestions, any requests, um, any ideas, please comment. Let me know what other things you guys want to learn. So, Terry loves a bowl of icing. For the contest, is it any type of cake? Samantha, for the Indie Cake Off, IndieCakeOff.com. Um, it is, um, there's a category, um, or a, a theme to the contest, the cake decorating contest, and it is, um, any form of art. So you get to pick a form of art, whether if it's painting or graffiti or music or anything that you consider art and your cake has to fit in your theme. All right. So when we get to the edge, we may have. It be a little thin so we want to fill that edge in and this is where we want to work on shaping the cake so we want to make sure we still have that bevel and we have our pages round and this part can take a minute so sorry guys um, I love the fact that you guys are interested in this indie kickoff. We already have a bunch of contestants who signed up before we had to shut down. Um, very talented women. Um, and I'm super excited. Any category, you're going to have some awesome competition. It's going to be super fun. You get to maybe push yourself and do something you wouldn't have done otherwise. I think it's so fun. So we decided to host our very own first ever decorating contest check out our people so you have something to do and connect with us we get to play together a little bit more all right so for this super easy to ice this outside piece I like to use the small spatula I feel like I just have more control over the sculpted cakes and with the icing when I have the small spatula. But it really is whatever you're comfortable with. It's funny because I used to always use the big spatula and now that I'm doing sculpted cakes more often, I find myself more comfortable with the small one for everything. It takes longer with the small one. but feel like I have more control and don't we all love that all right we got a few crumbs there let's pull that off all right got one side left to throw some icing on did she say how many pieces in the book uh, how many servings in the book cake there would be about so a quarter sheet we say serves 24 so once we sculpt something that usually bumps it down a few servings so i would say 20 to 24 um, servings would still be in this cake or like six if you're terry i don't i don't know how much cake terry eats but she's always talking about eating cake all right So once we get this buttercream on here, then we're gonna work on smoothing it. We're gonna carve the pages so that we have some texture. We're gonna add a spine binding to it. Um, what else can we do? Um, I don't have gold with me over here. Otherwise we could like edge the pages in gold, which would be perfect for our curse of gold. Okay, so now is when I want to start, I have buttercream touching everything, we're covered. So now is when I wanna start pulling the buttercream off, but we wanna make sure we have our shape. So like here, I don't know how well you guys can see. Here I have the page totally rounded, whereas here we have this edge started. So like we have this, this is our beveled, the ends of the pages. We wanna make sure we keep that and it rounds to that point. 
So we're just gonna pull off some of the icing and then we're gonna grab a card and make it really smooth and pretty. So this is pretty fast. Lots of fiddling, which I love. I love fiddling with cake. So we need a little bit more buttercream over here. I'm sure you guys are used to me playing. I love getting to do these because it gives me an excuse to play with you guys and try something new for myself as well. And just share like what little tidbits I have that we have learned over here at Classic Cakes. All right, so we're just making that little edge. It doesn't have to be super pretty just yet. We just don't want huge globs of icing. All right, cool. Let's see. Hey, Maria, thank you for joining us. Samantha, you make it look so easy. Thank you. Um, I don't always feel that way, but I do love this cake, so it is pretty straightforward. Let me make sure I'm in this shot there. So first thing I'm gonna do is clean up the board. I've got my little credit card. Basically, I'm gonna work my way from the bottom up. So I'm gonna start on the board, I'm gonna do the sides, and then I'm gonna do the top. And these sides are just gonna be straight. The sides I'm gonna comb with a little toothed comb here so that I can get little page marks. So I'm not worried about that being perfect. I just want the excess icing out of the way. And again, we're just gonna focus on that bevel. I would love to know what you guys think about this idea. <laughs> so I have seen some 15 second challenge videos going around about like making an omelet or making a pizza in 15 seconds. And I was thinking it would be so fun to do a few videos, 15 second challenges with cake. What do you think? Do you think we can pull that off? What videos would you wanna see? What could we do in 15 seconds? I think that would be fun. I just don't know where to go with it. I would love your help. Okay, so we got our edges here. It's starting to look more like a book. We'll pull in these sides. Okay, so first things first with the top, we wanna to pull the edges in towards the middle. So like, I don't wanna just go all the way across cause that will make my sides soft. So I'm gonna start my corners start in this little crack here so this is one of those like it just kind of takes practice and you get used to what works best for you but I find like if I start with my corners and I work my way in it's much easier to keep everything the way I want it And you'll notice I am scraping off my card in between every pull across this cake so that I don't add more mess to it. All right, is it starting to look more like a book? Throw me some hearts. I love it. And these cards are bendy, so I can bend it to the shape that I need for these pages, which is really nice. So I got a really rough ice here, or I guess one step closer to a nice one. Let's see. Samantha, decorate top of a cookie or make a flower cupcake for the 15 second challenge. I love it. Throw me some more 15 second challenge ideas. Okay, so let's, um, so we have our general book shape here. Let's use our comb. And you guys can see it's toothy. We're gonna use the finest one. And we are going to just comb it along the edges to make little page marks. There we go. And for this guy, we want him to be angled. So what I do is I do one straight across first. 
And then we can do, let me come over here so you guys can see. We can do a slight angle, so I'm gonna do this with it. I think that gives it more of the illusion that the book is open and the pages are angled out. So real soft touch with that. Again, just straight across. So I feel like in order to make a sculpted cake look real, it's just about little details. So like making the angles of the pages the way that you want them, adding a binding, those little things. All right, so we got pages on our book. All right, so now let's make these top pages a little bit more pretty. I'm gonna focus on my, my book crack here. Um, Tori says, how much do you charge for a sculpted cake like that? That's a really good question, Tori. Um, and I don't mean to not answer it, but I actually would have to check our pricing. Um, sculpted cakes generally start at around $150. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, and they could easily, depending on what we're sculpting, they could easily go up to $1,500. So, I shouldn't say easily. It's possible that they could go up to $1,500. Um, so I have another card here that's just a lot more flexible. So I'm gonna use this guy as well to kind of get in there. Um, so for sculpted cakes, really the pricing um, comes down to talent, right? If there's only one person in the shop that can do it, um, if it's gonna be super, challenging like mental energy wise then it's going to be a little bit more expensive but it really is all about um, time so a cake um, like the 3d sculpted dog that we did on Saturday um, which we'll be posting pictures about shortly or the 3d sculpted tiger that Annie Sullivan ordered last year for her book launch um, those things take nearly the entire week if not the entire week Sometimes they take a team of people versus just one person who would normally do a cake order. So it just depends what it is, what new crazy thing we're learning and doing. Um, and then the cost of materials, obviously, for doing a bigger cake like that um, is more expensive. But really, it's just about time. Time and talent. And um, if you are a decorator and deciding what to charge for your cakes like that, I would definitely suggest that you keep that in mind too. Your time, your talent is valuable. If one cake takes you an entire week to do, then that's a bunch of other cakes you aren't able to do. All right, cool. So we have our pages are coming together, right? We're smoothing these good out. I'm gonna go back to my very soft card here. I love this for the detail work. I can't wait to post pictures of that 3D dog. And I'll be sure to post pictures of the 3D tiger again. He's on our website if you go to classiccakespromo.com. Um, or if you look back on our Instagram or Facebook, he's been posted a couple of times. Um, that is one of my favorite cakes that we've ever done. That was the heaviest cake I've ever lifted. I don't know if I would ever take an order for a cake that size again so that might be one for the record books because lifting that cake in and out of the van was one of the scariest things I've ever done in my entire life it was so heavy when we do sculpted cakes like that we put them on plywood boards so that there's no flexibility like a cake board um, has flexibility and that cannot be good for a cake when you don't want it to shift so um, it works out really well but it also makes the cake extra heavy 
And then for some of those huge sculpted cakes, we have armatures or steel rods um, to hold like the head in place or arms or whatever. And that stuff is all just heavy. And cake in itself is pretty heavy. All right, guys, I know I'm like fiddling here. Okay, so we have it pretty good. If this was for an order, I'd spend another few minutes making it like really, really nice, but I don't wanna waste time with that for you guys. Um, you uh, are generous enough to be spending your time with me now. So, Christine, thank you for joining us. Diane, awesome. Let's see, Hasna, Tori, thank you guys so much. Tori, oh not my gosh, asking about pricing is not rude at all. Um, I totally appreciate that. I just always feel like I don't have like a real good answer um, because um, pricing depends on the size of the cake, the flavors, the design, the, the details in the design, all of these things. So I just feel like it's hard to give an exact price and I honestly don't remember exactly the pricing here. So um, I've been doing a lot of weddings lately and um, so when I get into the party cakes, Jennifer, our amazing customer service manager, takes care of most of those. And so I feel like I've kind of forgotten our, our pricing on those types of cakes. I'm not good with numbers anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna do the binding. Um, Doris, thank you so much for joining us. Christine, don't be sad that you missed the beginning. You could totally watch the replay. We'll have it on Facebook or I'm putting them on YouTube as well. So I'm gonna make a book with a blue cover because it was a pretty color. I think it's beautiful. So I've got a parchment bag here and we're just gonna put some of this in there. I'm gonna show you guys how to make some pages in fondant that stick up off the cake as well. That's probably the greatest detail that I can show you. Um, so I'm gonna do this and then we will jump into that fondant piece. Um, just a little fondant piece to um, really add a little bit of more dimension and a focal point for the cake. It makes a really big difference. You can totally just do it in buttercream. You can write like happy birthday, draw a picture, put a flower, whatever you want on there. But Tori says, just started a home bakery with the pandemic. Pricing figured out for basic stuff, but I don't know where to start with some of the more creative stuff. Thank you for your knowledge. Tori, feel free to email me. Um, you can find it on our website or it's Megan, M-E-G-A-N, -E forgot how to spell my name, at classiccakescarmel.com. Um, I would love to chat with you about how I can help you and support you and answer any questions that you have. So feel free to reach out. Um, starting a business can be overwhelming, um, especially when you're doing it on your own. So I would love to offer any little tidbits of information I have. Um, okay, so I just cut a pretty big hole in this so that I get a nice big piped line out of this. Um, this is just going to be my, I'm going to basically put a border around it and that's going to be the, um, the binding, the cover. So I'm going to do a little U shape, really subtle. And then I'm going to carry my line out. Oh, air bubbles. Why do you got to be there? I love that you started a home bakery business. That is how I started. Well, I started actually learning here before I bought the business. I learned the business side of stuff at home with the home bakery. The woman who started Classic Cakes, Classic Cakes, 25 years ago, started as a home bakery. I think that's beautiful. Hey, Jennifer. Um, Christine just painted her bedroom in this color of blue. I love it. It's a gorgeous color. Okay, so we have our cover. It's starting to look more like more like a book. Um, let's throw some fondant pages on here. Um, I would love to show you guys how I do that. Super, um, super easy to learn. If you haven't played much with fondant, 
and this is making me crazy so I just have to fix this one little piece. I told you I wouldn't fiddle anymore but I can't help it. Um, fondant pages. Makaya, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? All right, so we make our fondant in-house. You can find recipes for fondant. This is a white chocolate base. I definitely recommend that. Um, and I'm just gonna pull a piece off of this. Um, a reminder for those of you who are recently joining us, every comment that you leave on this live um, gets you entered for a chance to win um, Annie Sullivan's new book. Today is her release date. She's a local author. Hands me make sure I'm clean. I have a signed copy of A Curse of Gold. Every comment that you leave enters you in a chance to win this book. We'll be doing the drawing at the end of the week. So replays, you can leave comments as well. So I'm just gonna knead up this piece of fondant that I have here. Let me grab my little, my little workspace and my beverage. Hi Lisa, thank you for joining. All right, so we're just gonna knead this and then roll it out very thin and do some little corner pages. I'll do one real quick to show you. Erin, thank you for joining. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna move. How can I do this so you guys can see better? I'm gonna move the camera real quick. We're gonna go on a field trip, guys. We're gonna go over here. I'm just gonna angle you down so that you can see my workspace. Okay, cool. So, I've got some tools and my drink over here. We can move all this stuff out of the way. I am going to roll out this piece of fondant. bit of powdered sugar so that I don't stick. I'm going to roll this very thin. We want it to be nearly like paper thin. <laughs> we do want it to be paper thin. We're making paper. We want it to be very thin. We want it to be nearly transparent. Got my little pizza cutter wheel here. So we want powdered sugar on here so it doesn't stick, but we don't want a whole lot because it gets caked on there. It makes it very difficult. All right, here we go. I'm reaching transparent. When I'm rolling out fondant, I love using lower tables so that I can use like my shoulders above it. So the weight of my body does a lot of the work for me. All right, we've got very thin fondant here. I'll take these guys off. My hands are um, sweaty from the gloves. Any kind of moisture in those um, that fun is gonna stick to me like glue. So always make sure you're perfectly dry. All right, so we're still a little thicker than I wanna be. All right, beautiful. So I'm gonna cut some corners and we're just gonna do the corner pages real quick. Um, so I'm going to cut straight. Where should I put my little scraps? And let me move you guys one more time. See if I can get both the camera, or the cake and the fondant. There we go. In the shot here. Fondant cake, there we go. So I'm going to put little corner pages here. And it doesn't have to be the whole size and I'll show you why in a minute so I'm just gonna put a little we can actually cut this a bit more narrow 
I have a little triangle for my corner of my page and I'm just going to fold this. I'm gonna lay this on the page so that it's flat on the edge here. I have this little pocket and then I'm gonna take my card and I'm gonna push the fondant into the buttercream here on the edge. If I use my fingers, it will um, leave like, you know, a log shaped print versus if I use the card, then I can make it pretty flat. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be pretty close to level so that I don't have bumps and gaps in there. And we can take another one and do the same thing. Put it right over the top. And this just adds the illusion of real pages in a book, right? So we're gonna cover this up, but you guys see how that just adds a little bit of life to that cake. We have these little pages sticking out. I love it, that's my favorite thing to do on these cakes. Um, so I don't need to do that on every corner. You can, it's totally up to you. Um, I feel like even if I just do them, and like if this is the front of the cake, if I just do them here, the back of the cake isn't quite as important um, or you can do the whole thing and then we're gonna cover it up with one big page here so I need to roll this out into one big sheet so that I don't have seams and I'm gonna use this guy in here too oh, we got a little blue on here um, oh but first we got to push this in so that I don't have a big seam so we're just pushing it into the buttercream so you need it to be soft. All right, so we're gonna do the big main page on here now. And we want it to just be that full size rectangle. We want those little pages to stick up just like this guy. And that just adds so much life to it. Okay, I've got lots of comments here. Let me scroll back real quick. Sorry guys, I got excited. Let's see, Micaiah, hey Lisa, hey Erin. Do you have a recipe that you can share for the chocolate fondant? I do not, but I will tell you, um, Dream Fondant is very similar to what we use um, structure-wise. You want it to be a little bit stre stretchy, but you don't want it to be like super soft and I think that's the hard part to find so um, I definitely recommend making your own you can look up white chocolate recipes um, I prefer it um, I just like the structure of it better but it is whatever you find that works better for you if it's your first time working with fondant do you recommend white chocolate or are there other types of fondant there are definitely other types if it's your first time playing with fondant I recommend purchasing a fondant um, that way you know if struggles that you're having are with you or with the product I would say dream fondant would be the best first option um, it has a very nice quality and consistency um, it was actually started as a local company which is very cool here in Indiana um, and our product is very similar um, let's see Aaron says I've never been successful with fondant well, let's figure that out, Erin. Um, Samantha says, no reason I uh, need to try it. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're gonna wanna roll this guy out just as thin. We just wanna make sure that he is the right size, the right shape. So we need a long rectangle. Um, fondant is a lot like Play-Doh. Now, okay, so we're too big already. So I can cut this down so that we can thin it out. So I'm just holding it up to 
see where I'm at. I'm a little bit bigger than I need. Um, fondant has definitely some tips and tricks that make it easier or harder to work with. Um, the quality of the fondant makes a really big difference. And just practice. So I definitely recommend playing with it. A great first thing to do with fondant is to make polka dots, make stripes, make something that you can easily cut that you would be comfortable cutting out of Play-Doh so that you can just learn your fondant. And then you can get into more elaborate things or um, things like ruffles and things like that. I would say this is a moderate difficulty. Um, I wouldn't do this for my very first thing, but it's also not super difficult. So I'm eyeballing my sides here, which does make it difficult, but I can always trim it up a little bit. Let's see. So I'm gonna start on this end. as it spins around in circles. All right, so I'm gonna take my card and again, I'm gonna push this center piece down. Just so that I don't have as much of a seam. All right, I'm gonna move you guys back so we can talk about this book. So we have our page. So we have our buttercream side, we have our fondant side. If this was going out for an order, I would definitely pick one and stick with it. <laughs> um, so you can see there's definitely some differences. I feel like the fondant just gives you those little touches. Move you here, thank you. I feel like the fondant just gives you those little touches that make it look even more real, right? We just have those little pages on here. Those little texture. That just makes it look a, a little bit more real. And I love that. I think fondant is a great tool for playing and for adding little touches. You don't necessarily have to cover every cake in fondant to make beautiful cakes if you are comfortable with your buttercream. So let's see. Becky Baker says, how do you keep it from drying out and cracking? Excellent question. Um, so a couple of things. Um, one of them is working with it quickly. So if I have it out, it's either covered or I'm working with it. I never walk away from it once I have it out. Um, Cause what will start to happen is that outside surface will start to get like a skin and get leathery. And then when you go to move it, it's gonna crack and get gross. Um, and then the other thing is very little powdered sugar. The more powdered sugar you use, the more it's gonna dry out that surface and you're gonna have a really hard time with cracking fondant. So I think we have a very beautiful smooth I love it. Beautiful pages. What else, you guys? Let's see, Samantha. Like icing and fondant matches. Um, yeah, our fondant and our buttercream are nearly exactly the same color. We kind of got lucky with that. Um, there's real butter in the buttercream, so it just makes it that off-white creamy color. But if I was, let's say I iced a cake, or let's say I was covering a cake in fondant in blue fondant, I would ice it in the exact same shade of blue. So if I had any tears or errors in that, or seams, I would be able to hide that so no one would ever know my secret. Um, well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, remember, every comment enters you in a chance to win this copy of A Curse of Gold, signed by the author, Annie Sullivan. We got to celebrate her today um, and the launch of her new book. So thank you so much for joining us for another Tutorial Tuesday absolutely love that I got to sculpt something with you guys. We have some very fun stuff scheduled for October. I still need some ideas. Um, things are not set in stone just yet, 
um, but I'm super excited for Halloween. As well as next week, we're gonna do some um, buttercream fall flowers. So every Tuesday, 8 p.m. on our Facebook page, you can join us and replays are on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to check out IndieCakeOff.com for that local competition.